Traffic Conversion Secrets Getting Your Website Traffic to Buy Instead of Just Look Starting Out In this book, we'll discuss a myriad of tools and techniques you can use to get inside the minds of your customers and create a traffic explosion. The first thing you need to do is get into the spirit of things and create something new and exciting. In this section, we'll discuss preparations for your traffic boom and how to dazzle your customers with fresh content. In each chapter, we will discuss the details and semantics of each technique so you can optimize them for mining your traffic for sales. We'll explain what works, the psychological impact of the strategy, and even the how to implement for the best timing and results. Each set of techniques is organized within a larger category. The two main categories are emotional control and logic, we'll be exploring a wide range of tactics that target two major groups of people, those who are easily controlled by playing on emotional factors and those who think analytically and logically. This gives you a powerful set of tools that pretty much work on anyone. By blending and combining the techniques, you'll be able to create sales campaigns that attract people you never would imagine being interested in your products and services. Changing the way you do business and implementing tactics for creating massive amounts of traffic on your site is easier than you may think. This book intends to prove that. Get into the spirit. Converting visitors into customers is easy if you keep one key fact in mind. People are creatures of habit. If you pay close attention to when people are triggered to open their wallets, then you can use the same dynamics to develop a strategy to have it work for your sales efforts. Understanding triggers that produce sales is one effective way to develop strategies that can work over a large cross-section of people. The Technique For a habit to work for you, it has to produce the close of a sales call to action. If you've ever gotten cable or satellite, you've seen them use this tactic to make extra sales. They always have free offers that are on a trial basis. They'll give you a bunch of extra channels or special channels for free, but it's only for three months or six months. When your time is up, the representative calls and asks if you want to cancel your subscription. Usually, they'll act like it's a big deal to come out and change something so you no longer get the channels. You feel committed to your cable purchase, and you'll seem cheap if you back out of the extra channels you were enjoying up until now. Most of the time, you'll go ahead and keep them and pay a little extra. After the call, the rep will usually offer you even more services based on a new special deal, and since you've already agreed to the service and the extras, you're more inclined to listen to what she says and possibly upgrade. This strategy works because you already committed to a purchase, no matter how small, and asking for something on top is taking advantage of the groove you've already slipped into. It may not seem like a lot of extra money going in your pocket, but if you do this to every single sales prospect you encounter, the multiple effect can line your pockets quite nicely. This strategy works okay with retail sales, but it is dynamite with direct sales on the internet. The key is to get your visitor to commit to a small sale first and then before they check out, ask them if they want something extra. You will be surprised how fast your orders tend to grow after that. The secret. The biggest resistance people tend to have when closing a sale is just the simple act of saying yes. Once that obstacle is circumvented, it becomes much easier to make the sales larger out of pure inertia. Once people are already walking in a specific direction, it takes more effort and attention to change direction than it does to just keep going the way you're already headed. Some people like to call it consistency in action, but it's also called habitual action. Psychologists say that it only takes so much time to create a habit, but it can take more than 21 days to break it, and it takes a concerted effort to do so. People generally don't pay attention to their habits, and that's why when you identify a trigger, it is easy to exploit it to your benefit. You are actually setting the course without making it obvious to your sales prospect. The minute they agree to even a tiny purchase, you have set the momentum to generate even larger sales, if not immediately, at least down the road. How to make it work The trick here is to make the first purchase as simple and as easy as possible. It doesn't even have to be a major purchase. You aren't trying to score a huge sale. You are trying to involve your sales prospect in your business at this point. 
there's plenty of time to expand their sales later. So make that first sale as easy and as painless as possible. This works beautifully online by having a very simple and cheap offer on your homepage. It can be anything, really, as long as it is a simple process and can produce an immediate effect. Reports and media downloads make very good initial sales online because you can sell them cheap, in mass quantities, and you can also deliver it electronically for an immediate effect. You have a checkbox to put them on an email or newsletter list, too, to help you capture their email and allow you to market them for more products later. With a little research, you can find out what products your customers bought after they bought your initial lead sales package. Then you can target new customers with that, as it's already proven to be a winner. This can lead to larger sales down the road. However, if you want to implement this strategy immediately, it takes a little more finesse. In the retail face-to-face -face world, you would simply do like the deli clerks and offer another product to add to someone's checkout. New home construction companies do this all the time by calling them upgrades. You sign for a basic unit, and then they start asking you if you want to upgrade the countertops with marble, put in hardwood floors instead of carpet, and so on. Pretty soon, the price you committed to buying comes out to an exorbitant amount with all the additional things you've consented to buy. And should you decide you don't have enough money for everything you want, you're stuck with a difficult decision to figure out what you can cut out of your home package. Obviously, the answer is that it's just too difficult to decide what features or options you don't want. Instead, it's much easier to charge it. That's why stores also make their payment options as simple and easy as possible. The more payment options you have, the closer it is to close a sale and overrule any objection on a lack of money. Some stores even ante up the ease of purchase by offering their own in-house financing. These financing offers usually start fairly low and come with very little risk on the part of the store, but it can help to convert sales prospects into bona fide customers. At any rate, to implement this at the end of a small sale, all you simply have to do is ask, almost as an afterthought, oh, do you want to include this other offer too? It can be very effective if you are doing this face-to-face -face and you've already got up to leave and just before departing, suddenly realize you forgot to tell them about that extra offer that would go good with this sale. The key is to be subtle. The hard sell online only makes a person mad if you sign them up for extra offers in sneaky, underhanded ways. Always get the customer's approval clearly before charging them for the sale. This can be done at checkout by simply adding an extra page they click through to get to checkout, where other offers are left unchecked but can be selected to add to their original purchase. Make it easy for them to move on and don't confuse them, or you'll lose the sale. Another effective way to implement this technique is called a one-time offer, or OTL. This requires special software that presents the additional product or products after the first one is purchased, but not yet delivered. In this scenario, instead of a download or thank you page, you are delivered to a page which says, Thank you for your order. Now, because you've just purchased product XYZ, we have a special offer for you, and don't close this page because you will lose that offer once you do. In other words, you will never have another chance to take advantage of this offer. Then you make an offer for another, usually complimentary product at a discount price. This add-on sale, in add sale always increases your overall sales, and many people report that up to 50% or more take the OTL. So imagine you sell the main product for $27 and then offer the resale rights to the product as an OTO for an additional $27, normally $47. So instead of a $27 sale, you've now made a $54 sale. Why not offer the resale rights for $54 up front instead? Because testing has shown that you'll get a lot more sales with the OTO than asking for the $54 at the start. You see, they've already bought the $27 product. Now, it's just a small extra amount, and that is more likely to get accepted. So, let's say you make 100 sales at $27. That's $2,700. With the OTO, you make an additional $1,350 for total sales of $4,050, assuming a 50% OTO rate. You can also do the same by offering a complimentary product instead of resale rights. You can offer the OTO at a higher price called an upsell, or at a lower price, called a downsell. To get your OTO offer to truly appear once and only once, you'll need special software. There are a couple ways to do this. 
You can hire a programmer at one of the outsource sites like Elance.com or Rentacoder.com, or you can purchase an already programmed and much more elegant solution like Rapid Action Profits. If you go with Rapid Action Profits, you'll be able to do a lot more as well since they have an add-on system where you can add features as they are developed. There are several different times when this strategy is effective. You can set it up immediately so that a very simple offer is made available on the home page. Make sure to change this offer for repeat visitors. The idea is to start to form a habit by having someone be tempted to buy a small item immediately. So that's the first time you want to try to slip your visitors into a buying groove. The second time to use it is after they've already committed to buying a small item and they are checking out. This can be done automatically using software that adds a footer with additional items that might interest your buyer or an additional page to move through to get them to the final checkout. Dazzle with something fresh. In a consumer culture saturated with products for sale everywhere, you have to distinguish what makes your offer better than everyone else's offering. This can be difficult to do if you are selling brooms or something so ordinary that the market has been completely saturated with ads talking about the benefit of brooms or some other item. People become jaded or bored with these ads and can't really justify to themselves why one broom is better than another. After all, they all sweep floors. That's when you decide to try and see your product's unique personality and bring it out into the open where it can be appreciated. Now, that's slick marketing to take something old and make it new again. Not only that, but maybe your product has some benefits that the other products truly don't have. You can polish those up and mention them in your copy, too, to differentiate yourself on the market. The Technique Okay, let's pretend you have a bunch of office supplies you are trying to sell online. You want to get into the mindset of your customers as much as you can. Why would they come online to buy office products? Why are they choosing to buy some products and not others? What is unique about a particular product that can give it a competitive edge? You can even gear your product's unique qualities to the audience you've targeted. Let's say you are using ads on Facebook or any social networking site to target a particular demographic of people for your school suppliers. Well, Facebook and other social networking sites attract people who want to communicate their identities. You might decide to sell school supplies that can be customized to suit the owner's personality. Marshall McLuhan, a famous Canadian scholar and educator, once said that, the medium is the message. This essentially implies that the format you deliver your content on embeds itself into the content. The website you choose to advertise on directly affects what you'll be able to sell. Keep that in mind. Try to use strategies that are different from your competitors and that play up your offerings. For instance, if you are selling karate courses, you don't want to only list those benefits that everyone else has on their website. You want to make sure you include extra benefits. While other people may throw out statistics on how many women are assaulted by someone they know, you might opt to go less of the scare tactic route. Instead, you may want to differentiate your courses by stating how easy they are to learn online and how they can help you develop fitness while keeping you safe or even talk about the stress-relieving factors associated with martial arts. That way, even though there is a whole market of people who may be looking to do martial arts for safety, that's not the only reason. It may be people who are interested in stress relief or fitness who you are engaging online. That's the beauty of online marketing. The audience is very wide open. You are going to have people worldwide who show up to visit your site, and you can't assume you know that the sole reason they are looking at your martial arts courses online is because you are afraid for your safety even if that is the case. You can always add these benefits, but don't forget to add the other benefits too. The secret. The key here is that most people need a reason to say yes. That's why salespeople sell benefits and not products. Ask any good salesperson and they will tell you that the benefits and unique characteristics of the product is what eventually sells it, even if the marketer is the one highlighting these qualities. People generally don't buy things they don't need, but they will need a reason to say yes, even if they do need the product. The reason for this is that people are constantly pressured into this consumerist society to buy, buy, and buy. At some point, they either become jaded or tune out. 
When they tune out, it's the marketer's responsibility to help them bounce back in. The customer may even be in desperate need of your product, but they may not be aware of it. They are just so tuned out. It is your job to slowly bring them back in and educate them about why they need your product. How to make it work Because your customer may not be aware of their need for your product, you will have to give them time to realize it. This is not a fast way to make a sale, but it is a way to convert visitors into customers eventually. Once they are your customer, they will be so convinced of your product's unique qualities and benefits, they will be hard-pressed to go elsewhere for their needs. So you are not just converting a visitor, but you are also promoting your brand and establishing familiarity and authority with your products. So don't be upset if you don't make a sale right away. This strategy takes patience. You can hit on a few customers who have a eureka moment when you first start listing your benefits, but mostly people need to hear or read things multiple times for it to have an impact. Then, something can happen in their lives that suddenly shifts their attention back to all those beliefs you've been listing on your website or products for years. Maybe they didn't think they needed to supplement their diet, but now they are turning older and people around them are getting forgetful. Maybe they are noticing they are more forgetful too. Suddenly, they remember that one of the benefits of ginkgo biloba, a supplement you are selling, listed the benefits of memory enhancement. All of a sudden, the product is more appealing. And the thing is, you never know when that eureka moment will happen with the visitors to your website. So you have to keep copy up listing each product's unique qualities to help educate them for when the need actually arises. So remember to remind your customers often on the benefits of a particular product, even if they've seen the benefit on other pages. Repetition is important with this strategy. You want to be able to slowly but surely gain the attention of someone who is hearing the same message from various sources until it finally sinks in. That's why when you develop a new product, you don't just want to put one sales page up, but you want to write articles introduce it to various people at the same time through groups, discussion forums, or even paid reviews. They need to hear about this product over and over again until they finally see a need for it in their lives. When that happens, it's totally up to the consumer. A great way to implement this strategy and make instant sales is with items that can bring out the inner child in people, like electronics. People love computers, cell phones, flat-screen TVs, and other types of electronic wizardry because it mesmerizes them with technology and also brings out the impulse to play around with their new purchase. Anytime you have a product like that, you can make instant sales, and they can be very high-priced in comparison to older products in your inventory. So, even though this strategy can work for any product, in order to get it to work instantly, you want to use it most with products that have an instant mesmerizing effect on people. Things that are tactile and produce an experience of childlike wonder or playfulness are excellent products to use with this strategy. Software is also something that can be sold quite well with this strategy and allow a person to get a small experience of the larger product either with a free trial or a limited demo-like experience. If your software is for games, or like a game, this too can bring out the impulse to play and produce the desired effect to influence your potential buyer to want to possess this new toy. The timing to sell the benefit or the product's unique personality is when they land on your sales page. You should have a sales page that funnels people from a blog, your signature, or other places to where they actually see all the benefits that make your product truly unique. You should set the title of your sales page to include the biggest and most important benefit that you want to highlight about your product or service. Many people don't get past that first title before moving away from the page, so make it count. It should highlight your product's unique nature, while being something that is attractive to the majority of people who might land on your sales page. The second instance of using this strategy is directly underneath the title. Just list every last benefit you can possibly think of for your product or service. Many online marketers think that the longer your sales page is and the more benefits you list, the more likely you will hit one that eventually produces that eureka moment in the customer. Just be sure to ask for the sale several times on the same page too, so that if they do happen to find that reason to buy that overcomes all their objections, they don't have to scroll too far and see the link to buy too.
Lastly, you can also start to keep a file of one-line benefits for each product you are selling. Add that to your signature and rotate them so that your signature changes constantly and people reading your emails see a new benefit every time they read one of your emails. Don't forget to include links to the sales page too here. Another time to implement is when you have multiple items in your inventory. You can highlight newer products over the others by showing how this new product has definite benefits over the other ones. The nice thing about new products is that they often can be higher priced and still sell. Think of when a new style of cell phone comes out. These types of electronic products fascinate people with the way they can push buttons, take pictures, send text mails, and endless other features. And the price is usually quite high for a new cell phone on the market because demand is expected to be high too. So when you highlight a new product in your inventory, you also have the potential to make higher priced sales too. The overall timing on this strategy is sometimes up to the customer, not the marketer. You can constantly remind people why your products are unique, but it's up to them to finally connect their need to your product. However, this dynamic shifts when the market environment makes your products far more attractive, like when there is a drought and you happen to have rain barrels. You may have spent years telling everyone that rain barrels save you money by helping them to store water and use it for their landscaping needs. However, if there is no drought, the fact that people have to buy them and install them without a perceived need can make them difficult to sell. With the drought, you will see your demand skyrocket because now you can also add, don't let the drought kill all your valuable landscaping, by a rain barrel. See? Your product didn't change. Even your benefit did not change. But the environment for your sales changed dramatically, making the timing perfect for selling rain barrels. Emotional Control Part of any good advertising, marketing, or business strategy is knowing your customers and potential clients well. In fact, many internet marketers would argue that you should know your target audience better than they know themselves. In this section, we'll be discussing how you can tap into your customers' subconscious minds and use their primal thoughts and feelings to deliver the best possible content and create a marketing scheme that draws them in like moths to a fire. Tap into their subconscious. In this strategy, to turn your internet traffic into paying customers, you want to concentrate on the person buying, the sales prospect, rather than the product. Your sales prospect can determine what lures will work best for you in converting visitors to customers, but for that, you really have to understand your demographics. If you haven't done some sort of market research in your demographics, you will want to do that. In face-to-face -face interactions, the demographics are the people you visit to market with your products. But online, it is not as obvious who is visiting your site and why. So you will want to gather some information through surveys, hiring market research for demographics, checking out the statistics of your website logs, and also using social networking to get a better feel for who might be interested in your products. The Technique to understand the unconscious desires that may be lurking in a sales prospect's mind, you need to interact with them and start to get to know them. Some people do this with surveys by offering a freebie in exchange for visitors filling out a survey. However, that's not going to give you a full view as many people refuse to fill out surveys. So, the next option is to get the people who visit to interact in a forum or group where you can ask questions, see what people are talking about, and get a general feel for who is showing up to your website. So start by gathering information on anything that might appeal to your customer. In social networking places like Facebook, this is a pretty simple thing to do. You just look through the profiles that people draw up in a network, and that tells you a lot about what motivates people who join certain groups on Facebook. But you also have to direct your market research to your product interests, too. So, say you are trying to find out the subconscious motivations of people who are visiting your pet site. There are the obvious reasons that they are interested in pets and pet products, but that doesn't determine the subconscious motivation that may get them to buy your pet products. For that, you might want to know more about your visitors. Do they have hobbies? Are they having safety issues? What about where they live? Is there something there that might make it more appealing to have pets or more important to have pet products? At the end of your research into this issue, you may come up with a couple of different ways to implement the strategy. 
Once you have a good idea of some underlying motivations that might be driving traffic to your website, then you simply either provide the solution to this unconscious desire by providing services that match your target market's needs. You will want to do that by writing online copy that expresses how it solves their needs by selling the benefits first. But if you have done your homework well, you will be pushing a trigger button that gets immediate attention and can result in an instant sale purely from understanding the psychology of why your customers buy. The Secret Let's face it, when it comes to subconscious triggers, most people are on automatic pilot. Our entire society is set up to keep people in this hypnotic state, so people generally don't question why they do a certain thing or make a particular purchase. They just may have the vague sense they need it. However, there are some subconscious triggers that appeal to almost everyone's ego. Sex, money, and power. These are not so hidden, except that when people make a purchase, they may not even be aware that it is exactly one of these triggers that finally sealed the deal. That's why advertisers showcase pretty girls with their products for men. They may be selling electric shavers, but the woman is the one touching his face on television and going, ah, right, isn't that so? So, was it the features of that particular razor that sold it, or the subconscious trigger that insinuated the person's sex appeal would shoot up dramatically if they used it? Probably the latter. However, if you ask a person why they bought that razor, they will most likely start to tell about the features because the trigger was so subconscious they don't even realize they were influenced by it. Then there are subconscious triggers that aren't so universal but are specific to your demographic and your product. For instance, do you remember the commercials about the elderly person who falls and can't get up? Then they have the instant communication system around their neck that notifies someone they need help. Okay, so what is the subconscious trigger here? It's the fear of living alone and having no one around to help. That might be specific to the demographic of the elderly people they were trying to sell. But no matter how memorable the commercial is, most people buying it would probably not want to admit that fear of being frail, or even being elderly for that matter. They might convince themselves that the reason they bought it was because it was convenient or not that expensive. So be aware that the unconscious desires can be universal or specific to your demographic. The key is to provide the solution or associate your product with that unconscious desire so that people will feel more compelled to close the deal. In a way, you will have to be smarter than the people who are buying your products. You may have a product that doesn't appear to have universal appeal, but you want to use this strategy. It's your job to figure out a way to associate that product with either sex, money, or power, or some other unconscious desire that may land you a sale. How to make it work To implement this strategy online, you will not only be targeting sales, but any call to action that can increase the value of your website or blog. In these terms, a call to action may be to buy something, but it can also be to add a comment to your blog to discuss something in a public forum, to join your email list, or any other action that makes the buyer interact with the site. If you have a lot of activity on your site, this can help you define what is motivating the visits to your site and how to manifest your visitors' unconscious desires, as we talked about earlier. You will want to use the gathering phase to call information on your visitors' subconscious desires. Maybe you experience more sales from people who are visiting your site from the southern United States in the summer than you do from other regions of the country. This tells you that there is something specific to that region that is motivating sales. The fact is that southern states have a harder time controlling fleas in the summer months, and even though you may not live there, your website is worldwide and people have found it and are buying. Well, one of the ways you can influence a subconscious trigger is just to advertise how many southerners actually buy from your site, but that's not very subtle. It may trigger feelings of belonging and also status, too, but it can also make them wonder why they're being targeted. The key to using a subconscious trigger is to keep it somewhat subconscious. You may get it, but it shouldn't be too obvious to the people who are buying your products or they will resist it. So, maybe you find out people in the South who have lots of dogs or cats living in the country and like country music or NASCAR. Voila! You set up your pet site with a referral from a country music star or a NASCAR driver you don't mention the word South at all, even though that's your demographic. You don't say that Southerners have too many fleas in the summer. 
You just have your celebrity showing how effective it is to treat their pets with your product and what they like about it, the benefits. The subconscious trigger of identity is very powerful. They will identify your product with where they live in the South and probably think of you more in association with the celebrity. Every time they hear a song or watch NASCAR, subconsciously they will remember that ad and if they happen to be doing it in the summer, you've probably already made a sale. So the thing is to be subtle but focused on your product and target audience when you are going to close the deal. That doesn't mean that you can't use this strategy for other things to get your visitors involved in your site and help you determine their needs. As mentioned earlier, a valid action on your site might be someone putting a comment on your blog or adding a post to a discussion group on your site. If your site is a group site with membership levels and more, you can easily use the subconscious desire to belong to stimulate growth in your website and more activity. You can even sell memberships on your site if you target the subconscious desire to belong to a status group very carefully. The way to do this is to build a core group first of people who are already online. This gives your site authority. Then use strategies like Facebook where people join who have similar networks, interests, or because they are friends already. So you sign up people and invite them to have their friends join. You can even give them something for their effort by either using a point system or some free gift. This will help you build a network of people with similar interests who want to buy your products. Another way to use the subconscious desire to belong is to add different membership levels to your site. This works particularly well for sites that have a great deal of prestige. eBay uses this strategy by offering sellers a power seller status on their membership if they happen to have a high number of sales and a 98% feedback rating by the end of several months. If they do, they are automatically promoted to power seller status. Meanwhile, this motivates people to sell a lot and keep up good customer service on eBay. Similarly, if you own a respected research or nonprofit site, you can have people who want memberships to get different perks per membership level and different types of recognition for being a part of your organization. This helps you sell memberships and increases your pool of people. The timing for this is actually very flexible. You can influence people through their subconscious programming at any stage of the sales cycle. It is particularly effective at the beginning when people might be attracted to your website, but not quite identifying it with their needs yet. By carefully triggering those subconscious desires, they will associate your website and products with the solution to their needs. So while you can do this anytime, at the beginning it can form a powerful first impression without being overbearing or insulting to the buyer's intelligence. Another time that is perfect for this strategy is on your membership sales page since you can trigger the particular subconscious reason someone might join and help them to seal the deal. For instance, maybe you are a nonprofit that deals with environmental cleanup. Then you can have on your membership page the different levels and how each level helps you to do more good in the community. You can send them a bumper sticker or some other personally identifying perk to make them proud they belong to such a wonderful organization. Also, when a deal has already been closed, you might still be able to use a subconscious trigger right before the checkout to get more sales. Like the Amazon list that shows people who bought this item also bought these, which triggers a status subconscious desire. How can you pass up on the other books when so many other people have them? Are they smarter than you? Richer than you? What do they know that you don't know? So you might get triggered to buy more just to keep up with the Joneses. Create Emotional Impact If you think buying is not an emotional experience, you are mistaken. Every word in sales copy is amplified when it triggers an emotional response and can be the difference between copy that excites the imagination of the potential buyer and that which deadens it. When you engage the buyer's imagination, they can even begin to imagine what it's like to own the product you are selling, and it stirs up the flames of desire for possessing it. It is true that if you want to sell, you want to sell by impacting the emotions of your potential buyer. Even though you know that the final decision may be justified through logic, the initial way to get by the mind that will think up all sorts of objections to the sale is to appeal to the emotions. The Technique When you are advertising your products or services, you will want to pay close attention to the words you choose. Words are powerful tools on the internet that you can use to frame the way a person perceives not only the value of your product, 
but also the experience of possible ownership. Words tell stories that inform your readers about how this product or service solved a problem for some other buyer. Stories can pull a buyer into identifying with the other buyers and help them to visualize their own problems being solved, their lives getting easier or better for having made the purchase. You will want to pick words that not only tell a vivid story, however, you will also want to use words that influence the buyer's feelings and gives them favorable impressions. It's really not that hard to do. People have a variety of automatic emotional responses to different words. All you have to do is find out which words create the best results and implement them in your sales copy. You want to create a sales environment that puts people into an emotional mindset. Why? The simple reason is to bypass the logical mind long enough to make the sale. Sure, the final decision to buy will need to be justified with solid benefits, but that's not typically the reason a person ends up making the decision to buy. They may not even be aware that many of their buying decisions are based on how they feel about a product rather than what they think about it. People actually feel thrills when they buy, and that thrill acts as a beacon to get them to buy again. Yet, when they are asked why they buy a particular product, they don't talk about how they feel. That's rather personal. Instead, they list the benefits. That's because when people are asked to justify a purchase, the mind automatically kicks in even if they made the decision based solely on how they felt at the time of purchase. The Secret The brain has two halves and one deals with logic and the other is more intuitive and feeling. The two halves generally don't communicate at the same time in most people. If you have very strong emotions, your reason is usually blocked from functioning at its highest potential and vice versa. This can be really useful information in your marketing efforts because if you can get someone to get emotional about your products, you can sell without even really having to work too hard at it. Not only that, but once an impression is made on the emotional mind, it tends to have a longer memory than the logical mind. It is even well known that feelings can be associated to various stimuli that bring back powerful memories, complete with the emotions, sometimes just by smelling something that reminds you of your childhood. Words aren't just letters strung together that have a logical meaning. They also have a personal meaning. If you can tap into that emotional intelligence and bypass the logical critic most people have standing ready to say no, you will find that you can sell things much faster and retain customers with a higher sense of satisfaction after the sale. You don't just have to focus on invoking pleasant emotions because negative emotions can also be powerful motivators to close a sale. Think of people who are in the market to buy GPS systems for their cars. Why would they want to buy that? On an emotional basis, they may be trying to avoid getting lost, so the feeling you want to invoke is precisely that confused and lost feeling that they dread, and then offer the GPS system as a solution to never having to feel that way again. How to make it work how to implement this strategy is to start making a list of alternative emotion-packed words that influence your potential buyer in subtle but powerful ways. Review your copy for opportunities where you can reach out and literally touch the buyer and comfort or assure them that they are making the right decision to buy. One word that is very powerful and should be used more in copy is the word invest instead of buy. When you buy something, it almost has the connotation of being taken for a ride. For instance, when you buy into something, it means you've been convinced. Maybe even despite your feeling, it may not be such a good idea. However, the word invest has the opposite feeling. It gives you a feeling of security and reaping returns, even if you don't have a logical explanation for why that is so. It's just a good investment. People in the real estate industry are masters at this game. When a house is small, they call it cozy. When the walls are painted in odd colors, they call it custom paint. If it is falling apart at the seams, they call it a handyman special. These are euphemisms that don't completely hide the meaning, but reframe it to show off the positive aspects of it. They plug into the emotional impact of the words. Cozy gives you the idea of warmth and being hugged by your mother. Custom paint is a term that can mean anything from a personalized mural complete with the kid's handprints to a mural vista of the French Riviera by a local artist. It's up to the person reading the ad to fill in the blanks, and normally they fill them in with whatever appeals to them. Handyman Special gives you an idea that it's a property that won't last long, being special, 
and that it only needs little fixes here and there. So paying attention to the choice of words is important to implement this strategy. That can be done by pure trial and error or by looking up sales books to find which words carry a positive impact. There are many such words that you see in television ads, like the words new, improved, easy, and more. Or you can just start to switch words here and there in your copy and see what impact it makes on your bottom line. The second way to implement this strategy is to bring out your inner drama queen. You want to be able to exude emotion and have that pour all over your sales copy. Try to write up an offer that really engages someone on an emotional level. Use it in your sales presentations by trying to bring in an emotional content that people can quickly identify with and then use it to manipulate people into a frame of mind that makes them buy. Especially, you want to focus on framing the benefits in an emotional framework. This will help your buyer begin to imagine and experience your product more in their feelings. Try to describe the product in emotional language that triggers people into associations that are positive for them. This is the same idea that real estate people use when they advise you to bake cookies or simmer cinnamon sticks in the house before you show it. The scents pull in memories of mom baking in the kitchen and make the sale for you through subconscious emotional associations. Well, you can do the same with words by painting the picture of the emotional trigger for them to be able to visualize it better in their mind. Obviously, depending on your demographics, the emotional triggers for one group may be different from another. It's your job to figure out which emotional triggers will appeal to the people you are marketing. If you are marketing to harried working moms, then triggering the image of crying babies and the phone ringing while dinner burns on the stove would sell anything that makes this scenario go away. It might be easy to make microwave meals. It can be an answering machine that shows you who is calling and whether it's important. It's not always going to be obvious how to associate the emotion to your product, but it should be relevant to your demographic. If you were to use that same imagery to try to sell microwave meals for single professionals, they would not relate to it, even if the microwave meal might appeal to them, if it had to be framed differently. Do you see how the emotion is triggered specifically by the advertising in the target audience? For some, the emotional trigger will strike them right where they live, and for others, it simply leaves them cold. You have to know who you are marketing to to understand how to trigger the emotions that you want to associate with your advertising copy. Some emotions are universal because they relate to our childhood. We all equate home with feelings of security, which is good for the real estate market. We all want to feel included and accepted by our family and friends. We all want to feel we are achieving or accomplishing something we can feel proud of. These types of emotions can also be used to mine a larger audience when you are unsure of your demographics. But the more targeted your emotional marketing campaign, the greater the possibility that it will be a stronger influence to trigger buying behavior. The time to use this strategy is when you are first presenting the product to the public or your website visitor. Don't wait to start to bring some familiarity to the product that the person can begin to identify with it as the solution to their problems. Try to engage all the senses so that they can begin to tie into the sensual aspect of the product. This will lead to the emotional part of their brain and bring forth associated positive memories. Once that first impression is made in the emotional part of the brain, it will be very hard to shake later on. That's part of the reason that many expert salespeople will actually take a sample with them to a presentation, something their potential buyer can touch and experience. It appeals to the emotional side of all human beings and gets them to start imagining what it would be like to own the regular product all to themselves. Think of how car manufacturers present their advertising for cars. They typically show a convertible car winding down a stunning coastal highway, Sea breeze flying through the driver's hair as the sun beats down on dazzling water and sand. You can practically smell the salt air and taste the spray of seawater in your mouth. And that's the point. They evoke the emotional response by getting you to imagine buying the car. You then become that person with the perfect life that has the wind whipping through your hair in a breezy, freeing experience while everyone else is stuck in a cubicle hard at work. It's really quite amusing when we realize how easily our emotions are manipulated, but that's really the case. There are certain desires that most human beings will do anything to experience. Love, freedom, joy, and success. Tie those emotions to your product, and you've got a winner. 